Welcome back. It's time for our very first hot topic, and we want to take a look at what's happening between Labour and the federal government. On Sunday, yesterday, 1st of October, in the morning, Labour came out with a speech, a statement, where they brought some questions, raised some questions about the affairs of the country. And I said yesterday morning, it seemed that all was set for the strike which has been scheduled for 3rd of October. However, in the evening of yesterday, Sunday, October 1st, NLC, TUC, and the federal government had a meeting. And some things came out from that meeting. Um, so we want to find out what are the changes that have taken place as a result of that meeting. And those things that have taken place, are they... Um, going to lead to the cancellation of the planned strike. We have been joined by Comrade Ismail Adejumo, Chairman Ratao Lagos. Ratao is Radio, Television, Theater, and, and Arts Workers Union, and he is also the PRO NLC Lagos. Good morning to you, Mr. Adejumo, or Comrade Adejumo. Thank you very much. We uh, have been Comrade. And I, I appreciate for having me on your breakfast show this morning. Happy Independence um, Anniversary to you. Happy Independence Anniversary to all Nigerians. Uh, we're still in the mood of a celebration mm -hmm. since the, the holidays today. Um, back to your question. Mm -hmm. uh, Nigerian Labor Congress and the TUC, the two labor centers in Nigeria, are very focused and determined to be the voice for the voiceless Nigerians. And that is why we are resolute in our position. And this position is to get government to the table to discuss those germane issues that borders on the wage award, uh, the issue of subsidy that, is, that has affected the cost of commodities across board. And uh, this is biting other in our daily lives. And that is why we want government to dialogue the last resort for any organized labor is the strike action, which we find difficult to use, except when it becomes so inevitable. Uh, at this very point, you observe that we had a two days warning strike, is to uh, point out to the government that we are ready and we are determined. And this time around, it's not only Nigeria on this struggle, the TUC, the Trade Union Congress, the civil society organizations, all allied bodies are fully committed. Even as I speak this morning by 10 a.m., we're going to have a joint press conference in Lagos here to address this issue. But be that as it may, our national leadership, the parent body, are already in talks with the government. The government have opened up the negotiation and discussion in this regard. And you can, as you can gather from the press, both the online and the conventional media, that as of yesterday night, there were far reaching uh, resolutions and some decisions taken to cushion the effect of this uh, subsidy removal. And uh, it be also on the leadership to dovetail these resolutions and decisions to various organs of the union, as announced by our national president, Comrade Joe Ajiro, that today they will call for an emergency neck meeting. To, uh, to deliberate and analyze these uh, positions, all this offer that is uh, uh, that was extended to us by the government, then vis-a-vis -vis our various uh, state council, we also need to key into it. So as soon as the decision is taken, then they will announce the next line of action. But as we stand, it's still uh, uh, ongoing. Discussion across the two divide is still ongoing from the labor center we are going to meet this morning. Our leaders will pass their resolution jointly with all the state organs. Then uh, we make a final decision whether to continue with the strike as planned for tomorrow or we suspend it in the interest of uh, uh, workers and Nigerians. What, what, what was supposed to be uh, the issue uh, that will make you call off the strike? Is it more promises or action, action that will start immediately? Because sitting at table and talking, you, I, I understand there are agreements that were reached as far back as 2009, which means there were promises that were made. And these promises 
keep re-echoing every year, every time, especially elections, uh, election cycle or election time. Uh, these problems will come. There will be strikes upon strike upon strikes. So, I did you at this time want to go on strike based on the fact that you have not been given more promises, or you were going to go on strike based on the fact that there have not been action which you wanted to happen? Because if you are going to still discuss, and the government say tells you that in the next six months we are going to do X, Y, Z. The buses will come for uh, people to be able to travel, for instance. Uh, pe uh, the salaries will be added to your, the wage uh, salary award that you are calling will be added in the next six months, for instance. That's a definite pro uh, promise with a timeline. Is that good enough for you to influence you not to go on strike? Thank you very much. Uh, if you observe very well, this struggle started with a protest rally. Uh, in labor movement, there are procedures, there are processes before we get to the final bus stop, which is going on strike. We started with the protest rally, where we submit our shutter of demands to the government. That this had our demands vis-a-vis -vis the subsidy remover that is having a, an, a, a negative impact on the lives of an average worker and uh, the citizenry. Having done that, we observe the government to react and follow those uh, terms of reference by implementing them in phases because we don't expect them to implement everything at go because there are short term and long term uh, requests there that the government is not committed to implementing them as we expected. That was why the need for the two day warning strike came on board. Despite the fact that the TUC uh, boycotted the strike, the Nigerian Labour Congress, which is the mother of all struggle in Nigeria, was at the forefront. And the strike was successful by all indication. And that is what ginger rolls and moves us to the next level, which is the indefinite strike, as highlighted. After the 21 days notice expiration, we are expecting government to call the Labour leader into a table and give us a time frame, as you have said. Implementation of policies has to do with time frame, and that is what we build confidence in the in, in, in the, the leadership and the citizenry that government is committed implementing X Y Z as at when as so, so, so time, and we will see it in action. By the time those things are beginning to come in, look at the issue of uh, CNG, the buses. We have been expecting it the cost of transportation. This idea that of reach of common man. Look at the food of uh, the prices of uh, stable food in the market. It's no more affordable. What are the government doing? The various government of at the state, at the component uh, unit of the government, the state government, are doing little, but it is not enough to cushion the effect of this subsidy remover in our in our daily life. So that is why at this point in time we are not only dialoguing on the basis of promises, as you have said, but implementation framework the timeline must be clearly stated but how much, how much, how much confidence yes, how much this, confidence this, do you uh, have promises come to fruition and we begin to all uh, have a, a, a feel a relief from this uh, hash comrade how much confidence do you have in this government to implement promises that they will make uh, to you that will come to fruition maybe in six months time for instance this is October. We were told about student loans. I, I don't know if you've heard about it or not, uh, but that is for the ordinary man who is not a worker. Now, the government comes and tells you they're going to give you uh, 35,000 Naira or 25,000 Naira, as the case may be. Nothing, no mention is made about things that will benefit the common man that will be implemented immediately because it is not salary. The buses have not come. The palliatives that they said they were going to give to the people, it gets to the states. And sometimes the state, we hear it on the news, telling us that 3,000-something have been have benefited from palliative in a state that will have millions of people. <laughs> and then you are asked not to distribute unless the party chairman of that uh, state is there, which means it's going to party faithfuls, which means nothing is for the general public. Now, how much confidence do you have in the government that has shown this uh, nature to implement the things that you are asking them to implement if they don't start now? 
Thank you very much. Uh, the major thing that is uh, missing in the social contract between Nigerians and the people in government is that element of trust. By the time the, 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 the citizenry begin to lose confidence I have no trust in the leadership, then there will be a problem. And that is why we, the organized labor, the leadership, have most some degree of belief and confidence in the political elite, the ruling class, that the we need to key into the policy trust of government. Policies should be revolved around the workers and the masses. It should be our own uh, making. They should carry us along from beginning so that the processes of implementation and the formulation we all be all encompassing. As we stand now, right now, government uh, begin to you understand prepare for the next budget, which is 2024. I'm not I'm not speaking for government. The current budget that we have of 2023, to what extent would this budget be implemented to key into the vision of this new government? They are giving us excuses along that line. And that was where there was a kind of lacuna at the point of where subsidy ends and when subsidy, uh, you understand, we vanish. And the president have announced it. Now, somehow, somehow, there will still need for government to pay some level of sub, some subsidy to ameliorate. Otherwise, with the current exchange rate we have today, with the free flow of dollar, you understand, skyrocketing every day. There is no how the landing cost of petrol will not go close to about a thousand naira. So government still need to do something because the essence of government is to bring about greater happiness to the greater number of Nigerians, irrespective of our party affiliation or whatever you have said in terms of uh, politics. And I can assure you in Lagos here where we are, Lagos State Government under Governor Babajide Sonwulu, the implementation of administration of subsidy. The labor leadership are fully involved. Like my chairperson in Lagos, Comrade Agnes Essi, she's part of the monitoring and enforcement of the uh, distribution of the palliatives Do to ensure know? that it so, cuts so. across the vulnerable. Yeah. Hold on. Uh, uh, the comrade, number comrade. and the quantity of administration of those subsidy might not meet the yearning and aspiration of Nigeria because comrade. the federal government, hold on, the federal government promised... No, you hold on. Do. You hold on. You are saying it's very transparent in Lagos State. I want to ask you a question. Do you know that the last time palliatives were shared in uh, Lagos, somewhere around Ikeja, close to the, um, uh, the local government, people who were given the palliatives first time got it for free because their names were there. The next list of the people that were given palliatives, and we have proofs for this, were charged 2,500 naira for any bag of this palliative that contained rice, beans, and oil, and some other things that were charged to... Have you heard that information? Because Thank it you. happened here in Lagos. So Thank I don't know how much you monitor. That's why I'm asking you that question. Thank you very much, uh, 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 my... Uh, uh, you know, when you talk about trust and confidence, the leaders will repose confidence on people to administer this thing at various levels. You cannot be at a point and see what is going on across board. The governor of Lagos, for clarity, have set up committee, implementation committee, across all the major tendencies and uh, interest group in Lagos to look into how this thing will be distributed. But there is no how. You will not see some people with these shady deals. I heard about it, but I cannot substantiate on air to what extent this thing will be, you understand, done. But immediately that was reported in the social media, we quickly reported it to the government. And that they have, they have to checkmate these people, otherwise they will defeat the aims and objectives for which this uh, uh, palliative have been issued is, is meant for. And uh, moving forward, you can see now that all those kind of demand says the, the, the product is written not for sale. But why are people demanding money? Nigerians are so greedy. People who are entrusted with the responsibility of giving this thing to the vulnerable people also want to make money from it. It's so unfortunate. Indeed, it is but, unfortunate. Uh, Lib, uh, NLC, uh, uh, comrade. <laughs> yes. I almost called you NLC. I have, I have three questions for you. And, and I'm going to okay. put them together because of time. 
Um, okay. One, how popular would you say the NLC is with the people now? Two, have you felt the pulse of Nigerians with regards to this strike that's scheduled? What would you say is the pulse of Nigerians towards the strike? And three, is the NLC representing all Nigerians or just the federal workers? Thank you very much. Let me start from where you stop. The NLC is the parent body to many affiliate unions in which my own union, Radio, Television, Theatre and Artworkers Union, is one affiliated to NLC. The same thing goes for TUC. We also have some group of unions, most especially in the private sector, that fall under the Trade Union Congress. And by the resolution of NLC, for any action whatsoever, we are bound to comply. And that is why we are determined and set for this strike action, except barely any last minute changes or a decision communicated for us to do otherwise. Are you getting my point now? Okay. Now, for the confidence or the trust of Nigerians in NLC, we don't expect anything less because the NLC, right from the military days, go and check the record, the NLC have been the only vocal point that stands for the voiceless Nigerians and will ever remain so because we, by the foundation and the, 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 the establishment ethics of NLC, we are to advocate for the well-being of Nigerians beyond the working class, beyond those who, in, who are earning salaries. That is why in any struggle we are having, you will see the, the, the civil society organization partnering with us. The non-government organization, so many allied bodies will join us. And that was why the issue of occupying Nigeria, when it started during the Jonathan regime, you saw the NLC, we took a very serious and a very emphatic position, which prompted government to shift ground. The same thing we are doing in the time around. Whether Nigerians believe in us or they don't believe in us, the National Assembly is supposed to be the mouthpiece for Nigerians. But I can assure you, are they really doing that? The only voice an average Nigerian needs to rally around now to save them is the NLC. But it would appear government. to many Nigerians that the NLC were more focused and more determined during the Jonathan administration when you occupied Nigeria. Because Nigerians are already asking, they've been asking the question for some time now, where is the NLC? Where are those people that occupied Nigeria back then? What would they seem to see? Is NLC threatening, and then they meet government, and then they shift ground, and then they threaten, and then they meet government, and then they shift ground. It's becoming something yes, that Nigerians are no longer finding thank you, funny. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. The position of NLC today, most perceived by Nigerians as political, let me be honest with you, because of the just concluded general election. The position NLC took, you know, uh, we, I don't want to talk politics, because I'm not here for that. But I can assure you, by the fundamental principle and objectives of NLC, in which we are to struggle for the interest and the well-being of workers and Nigerians, we stand by it and nothing will deter us. If Nigerians want to believe, because the current government, we want to give them benefit of doubt for 100 days, six months, one year in office, we they will give an account, stewardship of what policies have really translated into the well-being and into, uh, benefit of Nigerians. But every government will have its own honeymoon. And that is the first three or four months to settle down. They constituted the cabinet, we can see. They are just settling down. Before, we don't have Minister of Labor when we started this struggle. And that was the reason why, oftentimes, you see the Labor leader, they will quit the negotiation table because you don't want to speak into the thing air. And all what you have agreed will not come into fruition. How would you respond now, we have to the... to hold responsible. Hold on. How, how we would have you... people to hold responsible. Hold on, hold on. We have people to hold responsible. Now, we have the Minister of Labor and Employment who will be responsible for the resolution reached with the government. And all these things will come, culminate into what next action the Labor leaders will take in implementing the policy that we have agreed or not. So, Nigerians have the choice to support the NLC as his own uh, advocate to press home their demand because it's not only the working class that are suffering, and every Nigerians are suffering. The government, people in government too understand that we are suffering, but they have to be compelled and pressurized to do the right thing. 
so that all of us we have the uh, a better Nigeria that we desire. All right. So how would you respond to the allegations that NLC has been compromised? Never will NLC be compromised. But because we are not political party, let's get it right. We are organized labor. We are professionals. You saw what happened in the Ministry of Works recently, where the governor decided to, 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 to lock out the workers without following down the lay procedure, lay down procedure. If workers are not coming to work as at the right time, the public service rules is very clear. You follow the process. You should inquiry. If they are not responding, you do the necessary process that will that we, that we give them the necessary sanction. Not locking the gate, you know, using those measures that are, you know, the, the workers, we can never be compromised. We can never be compromised. We call, we cut across different backgrounds. We have professionals in our means. All right, just before we go, just before we go, I, I, I want to ask you the question I'd asked earlier before you came on, and it's one of the headlines on The Guardian this morning. Casualization, concerns over exploitation, high demand for cheap labor. Over the years, we've seen how Nigerians have been exploited by contractors, foreigners and Nigerian contractors. What has labor done to protect workers who have been exploited and who are exploited in the country? Thank you very much. Before this struggle, in labor movement, for you to know that even the labor law of Nigeria frowned at casualization at any level. And for that reason, the Nigerian Labor Congress have a separate department, an organ called anti-casualization, which beam is such like on any organization. Have you arrested any of these contractors? All time we picket them. You know, in Lagos here, we have picket so many companies that are indulging in casualization and in human treatment to workers. Most especially these foreign expatriates. Mm -hmm. And we are more focused now in Lagos. As cases are reported, we are going to visit them under this new leadership of uh, Comrade uh, Joe Ajero and the chairman in Lagos, Comrade uh, Agnes Sessi, a very gallant and uh, uh, dogged comrade. We never take any form of casualization as it is formally reported because we will not work on ESC. Once it's formally reported to the Secretariat of NSC in Lagos, it will be referred to the anti casualization committee and they will swing it to action. I can assure you from now going forward, uh, any form of casualized, uh, casualization of Nigerians in any organization, either public or private, will be met with uh, stiff resistance. So if it's we not reported, to... it has to be formally reported by those experiencing yes. it before you can yes. take action. Yes, it won't be formal because we are organized labor. We are not just uh, uh, street workers. We work on uh, reported cases that are Is there any kind of sensitization from labor to these people to know that, look, we've got your back, wherever you are, if you're being abused, if you're being exploited, write to NLC and we'll treat your case. Is there any form of sensitization? But it does appear that there's nothing like that. Thank Otherwise, it wouldn't much. be going on as it's been going on. Thank you very much. That brings me to the question of organization. Most of the private establishments, even in the media where you are, are you unionized? I am working in the media stream, mainstream media of the government. I'm unionized. I'm a member of the union. If you are under a union, you are covered. You are protected for any form of victimization or oppression, either from your management or anybody. But oftentimes, when we move out for organizing this, we go into a union. They will say, hey, we don't want to be this. However, it is by collective resource of workers that you have power to challenge the authority. And that is why the union slogan and the stand, first standard of union uh, solidarity is from that when union inspiration to the workers blush and run, there can be no power greater anywhere beneath. So, so if we are united in whatever form, in 10, in 20, in 30s, we have the power. Look at thank what you, comrade. The of work. Comrade, thank you so much. This, oh, look this at a... what happened to the minister of work. He apologized to the workers. He yeah, time, time, workers. time is, is no longer on our side. But thank you so much. You've spoken so well. And uh, we thank look you. forward to hearing from NLC today from your thank joint you. uh, meeting to find out exactly Let's what's going to happen tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, we are expecting you to, to be there to cover the event so that we lay down our position. No thank problems. You. Thank you so much, comrade.
Comrade Ismail Adejimo, Chairman Ratao Lagos and PRO NLC Lagos has been our guest on the first hot topic. We'll be back with our second hot topic in a moment. Stay with us.